know we're overdue for an update. So we get my light turned on. So we get one lamp. Two lamps. I'm really tired, so I'm going to try to do this without getting too distracted and too off track. <laughs> I'm waiting for the pharmacy to open and then I'll go back to bed. I gotta call them. That has to do with what I'm talking about. So, I went to the doctor this week. Add my MDA appointment, Muscular Dystrophy Association appointment, and I have that every three to four months, basically. That was my diffuser turning off. You were wondering what that beep was. So, that's about every three to four months or so. It just sort of depends on how I'm doing and what the doctor thinks. So, I went to that on Wednesday, it's always the third and fourth Wednesday of the month, <laughs> and so we got there early, really early. Because we weren't sure if I was seeing the pulmonologist too. And if I was seeing the pulmonologist, I would have to do the pulmonary function testing. And because of COVID, they now COVID test you when you're doing the pulmonary function testing. Whether you have symptoms or not. So. Anyways, I did not end up seeing the pulmonologist. So we waited in our room for a little while. <clears throat> and then the fellow came in. I really liked the fellow. She was very thorough, I felt like. And she was nice. She just asked a lot of questions that my neurologist already knew the answer to. So, So yeah, it was a lot of repeated information that I've said many times before. It was fine. So after talking to her for at least a good probably 20 minutes, she said I'll go let Dr. B Dr. B know all this and then he'll come in. So then my doctor came in and he said where's your smile and was like I am in a lot of pain because <laughs> usually I'm so happy to see him but I was I have been and am still and am still in a lot of pain my pain that day was at level 7 and so we talked he said he was going to increase one medicine 
and he's going to force the pharmacy to give me more than 10 pain pills a month. Thank goodness, because that's the whole reason I haven't been taking it. So the pharmacy will have to give me more, which I need to call them because it was supposed to be ready yesterday. And I haven't gotten a text or anything yet. So, I'm waiting on medications. One that's got to be increased and pain medication. And those things will hopefully help with the rib pain. That's the hope. Whether it will or not, we'll see. The other thing he said is he wants to refer me to a headache specialist. The hospital now has one. So he's referring me to that doctor. It's a female doctor. Um, We'll see what she says, because the only thing my neurologist knows left to do, since Botox didn't work, is to do an MRI of my back, to check the spinal fluid to see if there's pressure on my brain from when I had my back surgery, but that was so many years ago that I don't think that would happen over five years later, so... I guess it would have been about six years when I started experiencing pain. It would have been six, about six years since surgery. Because it was mid-May of 2021 that I started having the headaches. And my surgery was the end of May of 2015. So, that's what we're doing about the headaches. But I'm not really concerned about that right now. Right now I'm concerned about the pain. And last night was rough. Um, I thought the pain might be starting to get better. Like this would be my baseline and I'm getting used to it now. That's what I'm thinking is probably happening. Mm -mm. Last night it was so much worse. I was at a pain level 8 and I had to take pain medicine. And the first pill did not help, so I had to take another one. I thought I was going to have to take a third one. It did make me really sleepy, so it knocked me out for me to go to sleep. But, like I was doing my nebulizer last night, my breathing treatment, and it was like, I was so tired. So. Other than that. I don't think there was anything else after that. I'm pretty sure that's all I have for y'all as far as an update. Trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out. Oh. After my appointment, I was able to convince my mom to let me go to work for the half of the day that was left. Oh my goodness, it was wonderful. I was distracted from the pain the entire time I was there. The kids were so excited to see me that it was like, it like melted my heart, made me tear up a little bit that they were so excited. And I hadn't told the teacher, so it was a complete surprise to her. 
so the kids weren't in the room and I was just waiting in the room and she came in and I said surprise and she was like oh my goodness it was fun fun to surprise her I told my mom not to kill her not to tell her I wanted to be a surprise so that was a lot of fun And a huge, huge, huge distraction And so it was nice to have a distraction Because while I was there, I don't think I thought about the pain once The only thing that happened was I got a little short of breath and was having a little chest pain, so I took my inhaler, then I was fine. So, completely back to normal. Wonderful. So, I think that's it. I have the next two videos, maybe three videos, I may have accidentally deleted one of them, but I for sure have the next two already filmed and ready to go to show y'all soon, so it may be a little bit before I do an update again. I also do want to do a Q&A soon, so if you have any questions that you would like to know the answer to, whether it is just about me or whether it has to do with my joint dystrophy, leave it in the comments below. One thing I forgot, the uh, fellow at my appointment did press on my ribs and that did not help anything at all. That actually made it a lot worse. So I wish she wouldn't have done that didn't understand. <laughs> it's okay. Because it's over. Alright. I will see y'all next time. Everybody's